The following is a production of Learfield Sports. We're inside Laban Arena, where last weekend the top-ranked Wisconsin women's hockey team swept Minnesota for the first time since 2010 and improved to 18-0. Here at Laban Arena, the Badger men's hockey team uses this ice sheet to get ready for small rinks at Michigan and Michigan State. Badgers opened Big Ten play last weekend in Ann Arbor against the team picked to win the conference this season. And there were some bright spots, including the play of forward Ryan Wagner, the sophomore, who had two goals and five points. And he sees himself as being a point producer as a sophomore this season. I look at myself as a point guy and also a like a grinder almost. Uh, I'm not afraid to throw the body around. I've <laughs> told you that multiple times. Uh, but yeah, on, on the offensive side, I, I like to create plays, shoot the puck, get in front of them in that screen, and get some tips from the D-man and stuff like that. So it's been a good year so far, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting to Michigan State and getting some, hopefully some more points in the win column and on the score sheet. Despite Wagner's efforts, the Badgers lost 6-4 and then 7-6 in a shootout. Now they head to Michigan State. I'm Brian Posick, and we'll hear from head coach Mike Eves on the Badger Hockey Digest coming up. The Badger Hockey Digest is brought to you by Charter Communications. Well, Mike, a lot of good things to talk about in that Michigan series. I know not the results that you wanted, but you score 10 goals. You go four for seven on the power play. Your power play is up near 24% right now. And to score four goals against a Michigan penalty kill that was at about 90%, that's pretty impressive. No, we won the special team battle there. Our penalty killing didn't give up a goal. Our power play scored four and seven and did, did really good thing in those areas. And... Uh, you know, the area that kind of bit us in the backside was our, our line rush against. We, we didn't handle that very well, and it's been an area we've been working on. I thought our defensive zone coverage was, mm -hmm. was much improved. We took time and space away. So there were many positives, and, you know, we didn't get the results we wanted. But, uh, you know, once again, it comes down to being a little bit older and having a broader perspective and the fact that things don't happen overnight. This is all part of our journey and our growth, and uh, we're growing, we're doing good things, and we just need to continue to do. But... Uh, it, it, when you don't get the, the result that you want, it, it hurts. But at the same time, as, as being an older coach and, and a coaching staff, you can share that with your kids. Hey, stay with it. We're going mm -hmm. in the right direction. Good things are happening. We keep playing like this. We're going to get those Ws. Yeah, it was like fire wagon hockey, though, both Friday and Saturday. I know Red Berenson told me it's not the type of games he likes as a head coach. I'm sure you're the same way. And, you know, you want to win, too. But you're playing at pace against a team that's known for its pace. And your team showed it can play at that pace. And we felt that way. It was just another uh, chance to, to show it and to do it. Um, I, I thought from a physical standpoint, uh, Michigan really tried to uh, put their backside up on Saturday night. We answered every bell. We competed. We won pucks. When they pushed, we pushed right back. And those are signs that you, you're doing things that are going to eventually help you win. And again, to the message to the boys, keep doing these things. As we watched the video yesterday, keep doing these things because these will eventually win to victories once we shore up a couple other little areas. Yeah, we heard from Ryan Wagner a little while ago, two goals, five points against Michigan, matching his freshman total for the season. Tim Davison had two goals and four points, but as Tim told me recently, you know, keeping the puck out of the net more important for him as a defenseman. Badgers have played two quality opponents the last two series, Denver and Michigan. Showing up the back end is important to him. Yeah, I mean, both teams uh, were very good teams. Um, I mean, they're, they're nationally ranked offensively, and um, I think we do a good job, our coaches do a great job of picking out pieces of film to show us. Um, I think a lot of us are visual learners, so being able to see the film and realizing where we're making mistakes and where we're doing things positively and try to, you know, minimize those mistakes and continue in the positive direction. And um, we work on the same stuff that we do um, in the games and practice every week. So we try to correlate or try to transition the practice to the games. And um, I mean, like Coach has said in his, in his conferences, that we've, we're going in the right direction and things are, are getting better. It's just, you know, one or two things that just quite aren't there. So we just got to try to get over that hump and, and try to get a couple wins this weekend. And Tim's right, too. You know, They've got to, you've got to find a way to keep the puck out of the back of your net by using different clips that you saw in the Michigan series or throughout any series that you play. He said, 
we are we like the visual feedback that we get from the coaches, and hopefully that pays off soon. Well, again, we go back to the Michigan week, and our focus has been uh, playing in our own zone, and then playing coming into our zone, and uh, we were much better in our defensive zone coverage. The line rush against, we gave up too many goals and chances. Uh, but uh, we will continue to pound that drum, and as we got better in our own zone, we'll get better in the line rush for. And it's the same with any hockey team that we have. Yeah, Those yeah. two areas are your key areas of concern when you're trying to prevent goals. And whether it's our level or the National Hockey League level, this is the way the teams score and teams practice it all the time. Yeah, it's a team effort to stop line rushes against, though. It is, and it's a, it's a dynamic part of the game because you got defensemen who are going backwards. They're looking up ice. They're trying to decipher, okay, do we have two – two forwards attacking us or three forwards or is there four of them and then they are trying to coordinate with our back checkers who's picking up who so there's there's got to be a recognition of numbers support who's got who and it's happening uh, you know all of the top tempo so it, it's an area even at the pro level that guys continue to work on try to get better at all right the badgers back on the road this weekend at michigan state an entirely different type of team we're on the spartans coming up in just a moment Game night, that magical weekly gathering where lands are conquered and you get trapped in the dungeon that is your bedroom. But you've got blazing fast spectrum internet, so Kevin and his friends have enough bandwidth to play together and you have enough left over to find a new apartment. Get 60 megabits of dragon slaying speed with spectrum internet. Where will it take you? This is Andrew Zielsdorf. He plays hockey. This is leukemia. It's bad business. This is Andrew's oncology team. They love Andrew. They don't like leukemia. And thanks to them, Andrew is now cancer free. Booyah. They are the world renowned physicians, scientists, and nurses at the American Family Children's Hospital. Pioneers in pediatric cancer care. UW Health, remarkable. Before we get to Michigan State, I'd like to mention a couple of other things. You know, you build leads against Michigan, and hopefully soon you'll be able to close it out like you did at North Dakota. Mm -hmm. You've done it before, it's going to happen again. But we saw, without Adam Rockwood, one of your most gifted offensive players, and the fact that Jed Soloway gets knocked out early on Saturday, you have the ability to come back, and a young man like Matthew Freitag yeah. steps in, scores a couple of goals for you. No, that was... Uh... When one soldier goes down, you hear sports people talk about it all the time, and other one's got to step into the lineup, whether it's football, basketball, hockey, uh, soccer. It doesn't really matter. But the fact is, uh, Matthew Freitag stepped in. I thought that Will Johnson got more ice time and played well. Uh, young Mr. Zerbel did some amazing things, you know. So it, w it was fun from that aspect. I think guys' confidence grew. The trust that we have as coaches grew in some of our new, new younger players because of the fact that we had to play them and they did some good things. So there was very many positives in that area. Yeah. Now it's off to East Lansing to play Michigan State. Here's a team that's lost four in a row, six out of seven, had been playing very well prior to that and brings back the Big Ten Player of the Year in goaltender Jake Hildebrand. But right now, something's wrong with the Spartans. Not sure what that is. Well, I, I don't know what it is either. I was watching video this morning and, and breaking down their penalty killing. I mean, their young goaltender, not young anymore, he's a, he's a veteran now, is, is their, their key, key pin. He's the guy that they revolve around. He's an excellent goaltender. They play a different style in Michigan. You mentioned that, and it's the truth. They, they tend to pack it in, block shots. Uh, they slow it down where Michigan wants to get going because they have that ability. So it's a different type of game. I think the challenge for us is that we feel, as we showed in Michigan, that we can get up and down the ice. Mm -hmm. We need to try to keep that pace as best we can because they don't want to play that kind of game. Yeah. And one more positive from Michigan. Yeah, you didn't get a win, but you rallied to get overtime, and then you got a point yeah. against the Wolverines. So now build on that and see if you can get a couple of ponies at Michigan State before the semester break. Well, that was interesting. We, we didn't talk about that much is the fact that, uh, you know, you look at the standings, uh, there's teams that are above us that won last weekend. Mm -hmm. but. But the team's a lot. We got that tight. Yes. We got that pony. And at the end of the year, that may be a big thing for us. So that was a good thing. And we'll uh, we'll put that in the bank. And we'll try, as you said, to get more ponies this weekend. All right, good luck. Thank you. Man. Sure, that's Badgers head coach Mike Eves. Wisconsin and Michigan State Friday. The puck drops at 6 o'clock Saturday afternoon, a 1.30 matinee. You can catch both of them on the Badger Sports Network. And for Mike Eves, I'm Brian Posick. Thanks for watching the Badger Hockey Digest.